In this video, I'm going to be interviewing Chris Chenna, and he is actually somebody that I'm pretty good friends with, and he actually runs an adult daycare, and he's going to talk more about this industry. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, thank you so much for all the love and support that each and every single one of you have shown me. And if you have not yet, you can check out the God Made podcast on all streaming platforms. Feel free to also check out Legion Assisted Living Academy in the link down below. If you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation call with myself, that link will also be down below. Also, you can go ahead and reach out to valleyalfventures.com. Go check the website out. And if you want to passively invest into the real estate side of things with residential assisted living, or you want to lease from us as an operator, feel free to check that out. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of this video. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. Today, I got Chris Ghana on my channel. Maybe some of you guys have come across his YouTube channel. Chris is, his whole thing is that he wants to give seniors hope and a sense of purpose that helps them live their best life. Chris is an entrepreneur with over 10 years of experience in senior care and graduated from the University of Florida. He is the founder and CEO of Chelsea Place yeah, Senior Care, named after his wife, Chelsea, which includes assisted living, adult daycare, and private in-home care services. Chris is the host of Carepreneur podcast, but is now kind of switched over his channel to his name, so you guys could just search him up that way. Um, through the show, Chris has documented, documented some fun adventures and also things that he's done with seniors. Chris believes you are never too old to have fun and wants to inspire others in healthcare to help senior live, seniors live a more meaningful and fulfilled life, man. Well, that's awesome, dude. Tell me a little bit about what <laughs> senior living, dude. Kind of give us a little bit of background and yeah. go from there. No, I appreciate it, man. Um, no, thank you. And thank you for all you, you're doing out there, brother. So I appreciate uh, all you're doing for the assisted living space. You know, I, I feel like I'm in a state of transition, which, you know, we can get into um, in a little bit, you know, just with the, with the you know, with, with the services that we have to offer. And then also like the name of our company, what we're doing going forward. But, um, you know, it all started like, yeah, a little over 10 years ago. We, I was going to school at UF, graduated. My buddy and I were going to go and uh, open up um, an insurance agency. Like we, we were, you know, we both graduated with a background in financial services. We were going to go open up an Allstate in Texas. Lived there for about six months. I, I, I think on day three, though, of working for in that field, I was like, there's no way I could do this the rest of my life. Like, there's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you're, you're selling this intangible product. You know, it's a, you know, it's insurance. Like, who, who, you know, like no one, like no one gets excited about insurance. Like you have to like literally only like like money, I think, to get inside excited about insurance because just the subject itself, talking about it, yeah, it's just it's terrible. So, anyways, um, we uh, I, I decided that was not for me. I really needed something that was gonna like you know get me excited to wake up in the morning and you know and, and look you know something to look forward to. And so I I moved back to Orlando, really not knowing what I wanted to do, but a, a good friend of mine his dad had opened up a six bed assisted living facility in the like the land or Orlando area, and I was like, you know, he was like, why don't you come check it out, see see what it's all about? And I pulled up, and it was in this like neighborhood, you know, like I'm like. I'm going down the street, I'm like, I mean, it's a residential area, you know, um, nothing I was like, I was expecting, I was, I was expecting to see like, you know, like a nursing home, I think in my head, because I, I didn't know the medical field. So I just, I thought of this environment as something that was gonna be more like a nursing home, you know, setting, but really, it was just a house, it was just a, a, a converted home that I had six private bedrooms, um, that um, had a nice little pool and a little, you know, area in the back, you know, that you could, you know, um, just, you know, watch the, the, the birds and, you know, just, it was just a beautiful, like, kind of, you know, serene environment. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. It's like hanging out with grandma and grandpa in their own home, you know, and um, I was like, I, I could totally see myself doing this. I spent the day there, played cards with some of his residents, helped some of his residents with some of their care needs. And I was like, you know, I could totally see myself doing this. I mean, this is way more like hospitality than it was, you know, medical. I mean, obviously there's medical kind of like components to it, it you know, and, you know, it's definitely kind of still in that healthcare space, but the premise of it is you're just, you're taking care of people. And, and that's, you know, that's the hospitality aspect of it that I, I love. And so we decided to go out and start our own. And we uh, started, uh, I was 23, my wife was 21, and we moved into our assisted living facility um, 
which was in Port Charlotte. We, we found a building for sale there and we moved into it, renovated it, and then lived there for about three and a half years before we ever moved out. But uh, did every job you could imagine, man. It was, it was a very humbling experience, but um, I'm, I'm grateful for the, uh, the, the learning lesson that we went through, so. Wow, man. That's it. That was a whole handful there, but oh, let's yeah. break it down a little bit. What year was this in? So this was uh, 2011. 2011. So, okay. yeah, and and the guy the guy that I like you know was kind of like my mentor at the time. You know, he basically had gotten this house back in foreclosure because he was in the mortgage business, okay. and that, you know at this time like no one's buying homes. The market crashed. Like, what are you going to do with it, right? So, so he got, like he like his idea was like like let's turn it into an assisted living facility. You know. Um, and so that, that was like how he got involved in it. And then, um, you know, when he introduced it to me, I, I really did leave there feeling like I, I, like I had made a difference in his, his um, residents' lives. And I, again, I really felt like, you know, I was like, man, that's really cool. Like, you know, the time went by really fast and I really felt like I was helping people, so. And that's a fun fact, right? You guys were the youngest at the time? Yeah, I mean, dude, 23, 21. I mean, like, like yeah. living in a system, like Chelsea had like, she could barely have a glass of wine, you know, like she just turned 21. So it was uh, awesome. a very humbling experience. You know, not, 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 I, I don't know a lot of, and I can't believe she did it for three and a half years. I still look back and I'm like, I don't know how this girl did it, man. But like, yeah. So, so you guys ended up purchasing a home and then, yeah. It, yeah. So there was a house first. There, what was that? Did you guys lease or purchase first? So we purchased, um, but okay. So it was back in 2011, you know, everything like, uh, you know, everything was for sale, right? It's yeah. not like it is today. So um, in 2011, this house, like, like the people that had owned it previously, I think sometime in 2010, um, it, was, it, was a, it was about a 6,000 square foot home, about 12 bedrooms, uh, eight bathrooms, and it um, had gone into foreclosure. And there was, it was a private foreclosure, I guess. So it wasn't like a traditional bank. It was a private individual that had the loan on it. And so um, he was someone that like, you know, he was willing to give me a shot because he couldn't sell to anybody else, you know, like no one was buying, the bank wasn't going to take it back. So he's like, all right, well, you know, if, if I'm not going to get paid back, let's at least, ca- you know, get this thing cash flowing. So he's like, how about this? You know, you know, I'll, I'll give you the loan. Here's what the balance is on it. At the time, I felt like I overpaid for it because it was like in a lot of, in a lot of disrepair. But I also thought, um, you know, at the time, like, well, I'm 23 years old, like, I'm not going to ever get this opportunity again, you know, um, or, 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 you know, I, I couldn't imagine myself having that opportunity. So like, let's just, let's just go with it and see what happens, you know? So, and, um, you know, yeah, that was, and then so you guys stayed at it for three and a half years. And then what'd you guys do afterwards? You guys moved out, start a second location. What was the goal? After yes. You know, so I so still like, I would say that that first three and a half years, like, like the grind was like, you know, trying to get to capacity, get stabilized, get everything, you know, and then, you know, as we try to figure out like, what do we do next? You know, like I, I was exploring senior living, you know, we were trying to find like another assisted living facility. I had uh, made an offer on another one. Um, we were kind of exploring that idea, but there was a period of time where I did get off on a little bit of like a software, like, um, you know, like side project. I don't know what you want to call it. So like, I got distracted for about two years, you know, but that's, that's you know, typical entrepreneur, you know, squirrel. <laughs> so, um, so I, uh, uh, yeah, so that kind of distracted me for about two years. But then when we were like, okay, well, what do we do next in the care space? We were looking at other assisted living, resi- you know, residential assisted living facilities. But then I came across, there was one week um, where I had like three phone calls in the exact same week about adult daycare. And like in probably five years, I, I never had a phone call about it, you know? And then all of a sudden, in like one week, I had three. So I just didn't really know what it was, you know? So I went and started looking into it. Um, and then I went to places all over Florida and then I was like, man, this is really cool. Let me, you know, let's start one of those, you know? So that was like 2017. And then, um, and then in 2018, 19, I was like, well, well we're, we're doing these two things. Might as well add on home care. So then, uh, we added, uh, you know, personal care, you know, private duty and home care services. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm like, like I, you know, I mean, I, I go on, but yeah, I don't want to go off on a tangent. No, no, so. no, man. This is great. I love where you're going with it, right? So I think there's, yeah, no, what I was wanting to say is there's a lot of lessons learned there, right? Is like, first, not trying to chase everything that catches your eye or seems to be a, of good interest just because maybe someone else is doing well with it, right? And I think yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of that just like anybody else. I think it was within like the first two years of my business, I was trying to start like a Facebook 
agency thing, right? Because that yep. was. Yep. Um, but no, that's a good point, and kind of well, said your. So, so, so just, like, I, I want to because you're bringing that up, I, I kind of want to elaborate maybe a little bit more because like. Okay there's actually a greater lesson in that story. Um, so, you know, it was, it was 2011, right, that we started the assisted living. Well, it was 2013 when I started this, like, uh, company called, um, it's, it's called Senior Source. And mm-hmm. ideally, it was, like, going to be, like, a, an online directory of all of the different services in the senior care space, you know, from elder law to just everything, you know, placement agencies, assisted living, nursing, the whole thing, right? Um, and... You know, I was going down that road and I had actually raised a seed round of funding and, you know, I raised like a hundred grand to like, you know, like, and, and, you know, to, to blow this thing up. And so I got, I got, I got sucked into like the software, like, you know, rabbit, you know, or, you know, they're like that, uh, what would you say earlier? You were saying, um, kind of like those, you know, get rich quick or, or you know these granite you know like chasing like like the fairy dust or whatever you want to call it like yeah. i i think at the time you know the software world was just blowing up silicon valley this was like the peak of everyone's like excitement everyone's of like the, like every, what was that everyone's making money you know yeah everyone's making money like, and you raise money and you raise money you know build this team and sell you know uh ipo on wall street and you know anyways so i got kind of like i think lost in that a little bit you know, as a distraction. And at the time I was actually selling our assisted living facility to go full time on that. And like, so this was like 2013, 14. And, um, you know, and, and the reality of it was, is like, you know, so we moved out because we had, we were, we were actually selling it to, uh, at the time our manager, uh, who was interested in looking into opening their own. So we were selling it to him and like, he was coming to take in that live in caregiver position and I was going to go and, you know, we were going to go and continue on this software journey. Well, as we went through that process, there was probably about 20 red flags that, that like looking back, it was very clear that God was like, stop, stop, stop. Like, like the entire time he was making it very clear that this is not the, this is not the direction I want you to go in. And, um, and, and, you know, I didn't listen until like at the end when I'm sitting at the closing table and the buyer's uh, co-signer isn't showing up, you know? And I realized like, okay, all right, God, I got it. You're in control, not me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's so important because I think when we try to, yeah, when we look at other people's successes or whatever you see on social media or whatever else anybody else is doing, it becomes very easy to convince yourself that, Am I doing it just because it's taken so long to maybe catch some traction or have some a little bit of success that you start questioning everything as far as am I doing this right? Like, yeah, I don't know. Am I a bad leader? Like, do I not, you know, like I think I'm good at business, but am I not that, am I really not that good compared to other people? Like, you know, I don't know, all that kind of stuff. And so, did you, so you didn't end up selling. So then at that point, so, th- so that, that was like when I realized like the software thing was not going to continue on, you know, but like that, that dream was like, gonna have, uh, that, that dream would have to you know, come some other day, you know? So the, the hard part was, though, was like, you know, honestly, like I had already told the public that we were doing this. We'd already announced to our family members. We were at the closing table. I, like, I, I, like, I'll never forget this day because, like, now I'm getting chills thinking about it. Because, like, I realized, like, so that happened where the sale was not going to go through. The next day, my wife is having a miscarriage. Oh, wow. You know? And so, like, and then my manager had quit, like, so like all of this is like, and, and so basically because my manager quit and so I had to move back in wow. to our system. So it was just like my world literally just fell apart, like wow. completely. Everything that I thought like we had built and we were working on, it was just, it was like, that was like that epic failure that like looking back, I'm just like, oh my God, like, you know, what did I do? Like, you know, like, am I ever going to recover from this? Like I was actually for probably a good six months. I, I didn't even want to face the public. I didn't even want to go outside. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see any of my, my peers. I didn't want to see any of my colleagues in the, in the industry. I didn't want to have to explain myself. You know, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a tough time, man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think that's, thanks for being so vulnerable and sharing that because I think too many people may see that things are going well now and you're, you're doing so well now, but that's the reality is, is that 
you had to struggle to appreciate what you have now. Dude, and like, and like the, the, the thing is like living in the assisted living facility and then going through that experience and having that epic failure, like, man, it, um, you know, that, that was, you know, those two things are kind of like the things that always keep me humble, you know? What, what, what kept you going? So, I mean, well, just pure necessity, right? Like, I mean, like at that point, like, you know, my, my point is like, I guess at that point in time, I had to buckle back down, right? Like, like the, I realized the software thing, that dream's over. And now I got to get serious about our assisted living facility and take it back over and turn it into something, you know? Um, because I, at the time during that transition, as I was kind of like pursuing the software thing, the manager person that was going to be buying it, you know, they had kind of like, you know, they started doing their thing. And we were kind of like, we were already kind of were transitioning out. So now all of a sudden it was like, I'm back in, I'm in charge. I got to do all, like, like I'm, I'm now, I'm, you know, the person that's responsible daily, you know? So, um, you know, so, so it, it was, it, 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 it was a lot, you know, going through that experience, but, but we got it back on track. We, then we, you know, we assembled a great team, we hired a manager, um, you know, and then it was, it, it was running itself. And then, you know, it's so funny that looking back, I'll never forget this year. Cause it was the only year in, in, out of all of the years that I've been out on my own on the entrepreneurial journey, uh, 2016 was the only year that I actually was like living probably what most people consider the American dream of like working two to three days a week, like, you know, four to six hours a day, like, you know, bored, like, you know, renovating my kitchen at the house, or like, you know, joining a, getting a boat membership, you know, <laughs> like, like uh, going, joining a, you know, a, a boat club, like, you know, it was just, anyways, so it was, uh, that was 2016, but I, I've never had that since, you know, it's, it's been now, it's, I've been hustling and grinding ever since then, but 2016 was a kind of a state of transition. We, we didn't know what we were doing next. Our assisted living facility was in a really healthy spot. We had a manager, so I had time and we had money on our hands. Like, you know, not a lot of money, but just, you know, comfortable, right? Like we had, we had built it up to a sustainable business that was, you know, that was like, you know, that we were, it was, it was perfect. It was just a nice little sweet spot that, um, you know, kind of allowed me to like, you know, all right, what do I do now? You know? And that's when the adult daycare idea came about. So. So yeah, tell us about adult daycare because I Dude, want. I know, could talk all day about it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I love like, it. This is your this is your niche, right? This is something. Oh, that I think a lot of people aren't really aware of. I mean, yeah. I was nearly as aware of it until obviously you know you and I got in contact and following you and your content and stuff like that. So kind of give us that thirty thousand foot view for most people because yeah. you have something going on really cool now with the adult daycare and that transition but tell us that yeah yeah yeah. i mean like here's what's crazy 90 percent of adult daycare centers are all are all medicaid funded so very very weird compared to like assisted living and home care right because that's not typical for those industries um if you compare just like size there's like twenty five thousand or twenty eight thousand assisted living facilities like nationwide you know, and um, and in home care agencies, there's like thirty five thousand plus home care agencies. You know, so I mean, like think about the scale of that, right? And then when you look at adult daycare centers, there's like three thousand. You know, and probably after COVID, maybe there's like twenty eight hundred. I don't know, but the, some stats will say like thirty, you know, three thousand to forty five hundred, somewhere in that range. But the reality of it is, is that ninety percent of all of those are primarily all Medicaid funded. So the average middle American, the, you know, the assisted living consumer, a customer, the uh, home care customer, they don't know about it. It's not a, it's not an option at scale. There is no national adult daycare model that serves the private pay industry, you know? And, um, that's wild to think about. Right. Like I was like, like, like it, 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 it doesn't exist. Like so tell exist. me, tell me in that sense, cause obviously everybody knows what a daycare is, right? They get dropped off temporarily. I, a few hours. But, but I, dude, I honestly, I can't tell like, you might know what it is, but like not everyone does. Right. Like I'm talking about industry professionals don't know what it is. I, like, I, I'll, like, I just was talking to an elder law attorney the other day mm-hmm. and like, so how many beds does it have then? I'm like, there are no beds. It's day time. Like they come yeah. for the day. Like, it's like <laughs> childcare, but for seniors and like, I don't, I, and I hate saying that, but it's like, I have to say that just to like create like a little bit of like, Oh, got right. it. You know? Yeah, it's like, so I, I still to this day, I fight this battle every single day. The learning curve of like what adult daycare really is, yeah. is not as obvious as like you and I might think, you know? So break it down then, break it down as far as like what, what you break it down to every single person you meet that doesn't understand it. Yeah, you know, I, I think, I think 
um, because usually it's like understanding what it is and like once I connect those dots like and you use that kind of child care child daycare you know but for seniors you know um, comparison then they're like oh that's great idea like why are there not more of them you know it's like so it turns into that and then I gotta go into the explanation of why there aren't any more of them <laughs> you know because it's like I think what it is is that you know if you look at the two uh, worlds out there that have like primarily been our like you know where we where you know most people get their care, which is home care or assisted living, right? Like assisted living was funded and scaled by Wall Street, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, like Wall Street money got into that field and scaled the like industry, you know. So and made it more well known to the average person, right? And then home care, it's a franchise model. So like, you know. So my point is that like, and it's and it's an easy, low cost, low barrier to entry model, right? I mean, you could, you could, for a couple of thousand bucks, start it out of your house, you know, and grow it into a $20 million agency, you know? Um, so it's like, it's one of these, these, these things where like, I think both of those particular models, they have, like one has the real estate component to it, which, which allows for larger um, sums of money to come into it and scale something, you know, because you get, you get Wall Street building, you know, 30, 40, $80 million buildings. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make sure people in those markets know what assisted living is. And then you got home care and, you know, and every, like, there's 150 plus franchises out there that all, you know, offer like, like a home care franchise option, you know, home instead, senior care, right at home, right start care, all these things. But then what's hard about adult daycare is it doesn't necessarily have a real estate component and it, and it doesn't have a low cost to entry. Hmm. So it's like, to me, it's one of those ones that's like harder to scale for like, like, like Wall Street can't find it interesting and fund it because there's no like big real estate component. Like, you know, like there is a real estate component, but it's not big enough for Wall Street, you yeah. know, and then and then but it's but it's like, but it's too big for the for the like, potentially for the franchise model, like back in the day, because it, 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 you know, it requires you know, some capital investment, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you're looking at like at least 500,000 to probably like, you know, a million to a million and a half of capital investment into an adult daycare space, depending on how big it is and the construction and the layout and things like that, you know, so, so there definitely is an upfront cost and not everyone has that, you know, but, uh, but the nurse with, you know, 20,000 in her savings account could start a home care agency. So I think, you know, you get scale because of the, just the sheer, like, just because of the way those other two models are done. And then adult daycare never got scale. And what happened was, is adult daycare became highly dependent on each state's Medicaid program. Okay. So I think, you know, you know, meaning like every state now, depending on the state you go into, either has a really good Medicaid program that yeah. supports adult daycare, or it's got a crappy one, and so there's no adult daycare there, you know? And, and so I think they became heavily reliant on the Medicaid programs. Where what we're trying to do is we're, we're, we're going after the, like the same customer that like is calling, you know, right at home, home instead senior care, Bright Star Care, you know, all those companies. And we're, you know, and we're basically helping to bridge the gap, you know, and maybe extending that person's ability to stay in their own home or maybe to stay with their family for another two to three years before maybe they need assist, assisted living or something, you know? Yeah, it's a very, very interesting concept for sure. Because yeah. families understand that they can't constantly 24-7 take care of somebody. Yeah. Right? So, like, if you, you come across, I even come across families that, you know, they just need a break. They just need yeah. to be able to drop their loved one off for a few hours so they can go hang out, play cards with their friends, or go do some groceries, run some errands, clean the house, whatever, take some time off for themselves, right? They need that. And I think that's the fact that you're bridging that gap because they, that person may not be ready to move into an assisted living right away. They can still manage to be yeah. at home. Um, and so it's a very interesting concept. So, well, and, and, th and think, about, think, about, think about this too, like this last year, or like or the whole COVID thing, you yeah. know, it kind of forced everyone to work from home. And that, that now, now that's like a new thing, W A F H, whatever, work from home. Right. right. So, um, so now think about that consumer. Does that person want to hire home care? You know, or do they want mom to like go somewhere so they can have the house now to work? And you know? socialize and be with yeah. people yeah. in their age. And, 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 and the, thing, the thing is too, is then it's half the cost of home care. Right. You know, 
So like now you're talking about a significant savings too. And then you also have an additional, you have additional benefits with like, you know, a, a much, a much larger savings. Yeah. And that makes sense too. You know, for each family, it's just a matter of being able to have options, right? Yeah. If they want to go move them in somewhere they can, if they want to drop them off somewhere for a few hours, they can, if they want or, to do or, 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 or we pick them up, you know, like they don't even have to drive them off. We just pick them up and then drop them back off at home at the end of the day. And like, you know, like their families don't have to worry about it, you know? That's awesome. So what are you guys charging or what are you guys averaging? Do you guys so, eight hours? Do you guys, what, what's kind of the model there as far as? Yeah, so we, we charge an hourly rate, like very similar to home care. So we, our, ours is 15 to $18 an hour. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, it's not, so, like, which is, it's not bad at which all. Is, no, I mean, so when you think about like our assisted living or our home care agency is 30 bucks an hour, we'll probably be like 35 in the next cup, like in the next year. And then I, I, I'm pretty sure by 2025, every home care agency will probably be at least 40 to 50 bucks an hour. And wow. it's like, can every, can every, like can middle America afford that? Right. You know? So if there's 16% of the population on Medicaid, mm -hmm. duly enrolled 65 and up, you know, then that means there's like 84% of that population left that like is private pay. Okay. So you got the top 10% that they can afford whatever they want, you know, like 40, 50 bucks an hour home care. That's no big deal. They don't even think twice about it. But then you have that like middle 70, you know, 70, 74%. What about them? You know, like, can they afford $50 an hour home care? And if not, what other options are available to them? Exactly. And talk to me through compliance, licensing, any zoning, anything of that sort that is necessary as it would be like with the differences between assisted living versus like adult care. Yeah. So, so it's, you know, very similar here. Here's what's interesting though, is that every state's very different and kind of going back to the whole Medicaid thing, mm -hmm. you know, um, so there might be like some states, if there's like a good Medicaid program, there's a lot of adult daycare centers, there might be like a much more strict or much more regulated um, adult daycare, you know, licensing, you know, um, but then you might have some states, they don't even, they don't even have a, they don't, there is no licensing at all, you mm -hmm. know, and it's like, in the, even in the state of Florida, like in Florida, we got 3,800 plus assisted living facilities, but we only have 300 adult daycare centers. So like, it, like the adult daycare like licensing and, and you know regulations is is all like done as a side job that by someone in the assisted living department okay and you know do you need a commercial space for it or is it can you do residential so you know i, I like i have my opinions on everything but you yeah. know i mean so I, you know so it's like like i think you know it's up to the individual how they view it i, I personally believe like for the model that we're you know, that we've built and that like we're like, you know, expanding is the, is really the, um, is like kind of like the retail plaza, like, it, you know, e easily accessible to the, to the consumer, you know? So like you know, if that family caregiver or that spouse is taking care of their, you know, their, their husband or wife, like, you know, we want to be in a place that's like, you know, really easy for them to get to and in and out of as somewhere centralized in town. So like, you know, that might be on the way to where everything's at, or it might be where everything's at, you know? So we kind of like are looking typically for like, maybe like a, a commercial space, a retail type environment. We don't want to be like, in a, like, a, like a, an office plaza where it's like tucked away somewhere. We want to be kind of like, you know, more visible, you know, easy in, easy out type of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, and that makes sense. And I think that is crucial for just marketing purposes too, you know, yeah. because people will be driving all the time by there if it's a, a populated area. So, and, and, and tell me sorry. kind of the structure as far as like, what do you guys provide? What services do you guys do activities with them? Like, are you guys just taking just supervisory type clients, uh, wheelchair bound type? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. So we, so we, we basically have like three different levels of cognitive care, you know? So like, it's like, you know, you have, we have our, our folks that are, you know, extremely cognizant that, um, you know, like really they're there just you know, for safety reasons, maybe, maybe it's physical, maybe they're in a wheelchair, maybe they have a walker, um, you know, but cognitively they can hold the conversation and, you know, and, 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 you know, they're, you know, a big part of the reason why they're there is, is their friends and their socialization. And then you have like the middle kind of segment that's like, you know, Mrs. Smith who like tells the same story every day, you know, yeah. but, but she, she can still participate in all the games and she can still play in all of them. And like, 
you know, she enjoys them still, but just, you know, every day is a new day for her, you know? And then you got like someone that's like maybe like late stages Alzheimer's dementia that like really kind of needs you know, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and you kind of have to help them with all of the things throughout the day. So we do have all three of those kind of stages that we take care of. Uh, um, and then, um, but from the time that someone gets there to the time that they leave, I mean, it's nonstop activities. We, 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 we have at least probably 20 activities a day, you know? Um, and, and, and it's all like, you know, maybe this one for 30 minutes, this one for 15, this one for an hour, like it's back to back to back. And we're doing everything from like exercises to brain games to arts and craft, you know, just everything you could imagine. And then like, you know, sometimes like, you know, we're breaking out into, you know, different groups and stuff like that. And this group's playing cornhole, this one's doing horseshoe, this one's doing volleyball, you know. Um, and then we got live music every day. We serve uh, continental breakfast, we serve lunch, we have snacks in the afternoon. We have transportation to and from. We have hair and nails on site. Um, you know, so like, like you know, it's it's like it's like the fun zone for seniors. You know, how many people that? Yeah, honestly, that sounds awesome. Like that <laughs> literally sounds amazing for seniors to be able to go to a, an environment like that. Especially wow. that, especially at that age, right? Because it's like yeah, yeah. this at this age, like you know, they're not able to go to a senior center or a community center. Like yeah. all their friends have like for the most part passed away. You know, so it's like they're at an age where it's like like they need to almost be reintroduced to a new environment with a new peer group that like are all in the same boat, you know, and it's like so it's cool to be able to give them this space that like now they can have friends and connections and socialization and get like a, you know, that a whole new lease on life again, you know. Absolutely. So talk to me like as far as like volume wise. Um, yeah. Kind of like how many people come through every hour yeah. or like every day like what what does that traffic look like so peak hours are like 10 to 2 and then like so like you kind of have like you know from about 8 to about 10 you kind of have like the, everyone trickling in you know at different times some people we transport uh you know so we're, we're, we're transporting people in about you know 30 percent of our members and then the other 70 percent people are dropping their loved ones off um, and, you know, but by, by around like 10, for the most part, everyone's going to be there, that's there for the day. And then like, you know, so 10 to 2 is kind of like peak hours and then like 2 to then 5 is kind of like, you know, some people are getting picked up at 2. It's like every hour, someone like, it's like, you know, 2 is like a cutoff time for some people. Not like because we make it, but families like have a tendency to like, you know, some people come pick their loved ones up at 2, some people pick them up at 3, some people pick them up at 4, you know, some people will pick them up right at 5.01, <laughs> then we get every last minute out of the day that they can to get their break you know so yeah no, that makes sense and you said members so do you offer like monthly memberships or yeah yeah they, i like we like because like in florida they're like the the way the state regs are written you know they refer to like you know people who attend as, as participants but like i've always felt like to me it's like a club you know so yeah. we've created this club you know you're, you're 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 a member of the club and so uh you know so you know we um we uh, have we do have memberships like monthly memberships, um, you know and stuff like that. So we, we have different ways that we can. You know, we have a, we have a fifty hour and a hundred hour membership, um, and then we have just like a pay as you go you know hourly rate. Um, so it just kind of depends on how. It depends really a, you know, a lot on like you know what, what what's the family's needs. You know are they looking for just like a you know a day or two a week as a break? Or are they is this like you no know, we're going full time? Like I need every minute of the day I can get. You know. And part of that membership transportation is like provided or is that? Yeah, membership? basically everything we do there is provided. So it's all, it's all, it's yeah, like everything from the activities to, the, you know, the only thing that would be like a la carte would be like hair and nails um, and things like that. You know, and we also offer showers. So if like someone wants to, you know, help with that, we can offer that. But um, those are the things that are kind of like a la carte, but. Man, you, that, that's a lot, man. I hopefully, whoever wants to rewatch the last like 10 to 15 minutes or even 20 minutes, I don't even know how long it was, but yeah, yeah it, it, that is, that is a lot to like try to process, but to kind of segue, yeah. you mentioned earlier was the franchise model, which is what you're doing now, right? So talk to me a little bit about that, right? If someone's like, all right, Chris, this house sounds amazing. I don't know if the RAL space is really what I want, but like this is something that I think is doable and probably makes more sense. Talk yeah. to me through that process, right? And kind of how you started yeah. that whole model. Well, so I, 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 about I don't know, two, three years ago, like, um, I, I, like I was in a group called C12 and, and they were talking about, uh, uh, you know, what's your BHAG? And we wrote out like, 
you know, our big, hairy, audacious goal. And, and mine was 100 locations. You know, that, that, that's been it since that day, right? So for that, so ever since that moment, when I feel like God had put on my heart, like, 100 locations, like, that's the goal. Like, that's where we're going. That's the aim, okay? I was like, how do I get there? So I spent about a year and a half, like, trying to, like, you know, see if, like, I could raise private equity, you know, if we could raise funding, because, you know, it's a, you know to, to, to expand and scale this thing, you know? But I realized that, like, you know, no one was interested. You know, there wasn't that real estate component. You know, it's like the dot, like the, they couldn't put enough money into it. You know, there wasn't enough proof of concept out there, you know? Um, so it was like, I, I realized like, I can't beat that drum anymore. And so hmm. all of a sudden, I, I like, I, that, that's when the moment, like, where I, I realized the power of franchising. Because, you know, at the end of the day, like, you're able to scale and grow something, you know, um, you know, because you're, you're assembling a team of people that like want to be their own business owners, but they don't want to like do the entire thing by themselves. They want to partner in it, you know, but they want to still have like, you know, that ability to like own their own business. And so to me, like, that's when I was like, you know what, like this, like, I think, I think this model would work perfectly for adult daycare. And you, 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 you know, you started like seeing like all the childcare centers that like had popped up and every single one of those, you know, childcare centers are all franchise models. You know, I mean, you know, now they got the canine resorts and so, you know, all those things are franchise models, you know, because they all run into the same problem, you know, where their, their real, their real estate component isn't big enough for Wall Street. And then, but, you know, but they, like, there's still like a, a, like a larger kind of upfront cost. So really franchising makes sense because you reduce some of the risk, you know, to the individual who wants to start a business because you already have a kind of a proven model. Um, but then, at the same time, like, you know, you give them the ability to, um, to own their own business and, and it's more of a partnership. So, yeah. so, so once we decided to go down that route, I was like, you know what, I think this is the, I think this is the way we scale to hundred locations. I think it's the way we can bring this concept to like every state in the U S yeah. um, you know, and, and scale uh, this concept nationally. And, and so, yeah, that was, that was like the, so we spent the last year behind the scenes just working on that. So you guys are still getting like all the franchise stuff taken care of as a so, right so we're so we're official now we, we literally spent the entire we spent an entire year we built out all the manuals we've uh you know finalized our franchise disclosure document we literally went through an entire rebranding uh so we are now like referred to as active age um and it's a-c-t-i-v there's no e so active age all one word because okay. in order because we had to get a registered trademark so we had to come up with we had to make up a word because every other word's taken, yeah. so um, but uh, active age, it kind of like it, it speaks to what we do, and, and and it just you know at the end of the day is um, that that's what we uh, decided on, and we rebranded all around that, and the new brand's fun, man. It's just like it, it just kind of it's like Margaritaville meets like 1960s retro vibe, so it's just a fun brand. I mean, we got all, all we just recently got all of, all of our renderings of like our interior build out, and it's got like storefronts, and it's like of our new location in Sarasota, and it, I mean it is freaking. It's so cool. I, I, I cannot wait to see it in person one day. You know? Yeah, yeah. I keep seeing it, and I'm like, dude, that's going to look amazing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Much fun. So yeah. are people able to get more information if they want to potentially? Yeah, know? so on, 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 our, on our website, uh, which is like activeagecare.com, there's a franchise section in there that has uh, information. And then, you know, we, we also, um, you know, we're doing a lot of educational content. You know, I look at it like this, like, you know, you know, the, the industry itself needs uh, like, like, a, like, a, like, it needs a, a, a movement. It needs but, it, but, but it needs a, it needs a, like a, a movement of people, like as a whole, right? So, so we're, you know, we're putting out the educational content on YouTube, um, and we have like kind of a, a quick destination of people just are interested in adult daycare. Period. They can go to ADC, you know, so Alpha Delta Charlie Pro dot com. Um, and, and, and they go to that website and that's kind of like a hub for like, we have monthly webinars we're doing, uh, with people and diving deep into like how to start, how to run, how to operate. Um, you know, we're doing, uh, we have a private Facebook group for adult daycare owners, um, and or people interested in starting. So, and we're providing a lot of just really deep educational, like knowledge. So people aren't going at this alone, you know? Absolutely. What yeah. is you, you kind of touched on it a little bit because I know people probably want to get into the nitty gritty and I know we don't have that much time left. Yeah, yeah. But what does it cost, essentially? You said 500000 to possibly a million, depending on the size, the location, et cetera. Would that be included in the franchise fee? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, so, like, so the way our model set up, like, as, like, an all-in cost, 
Yeah, you know, we're 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 um we're looking like and and we're, it's obviously shifting now too as things have gone up, right? So we're 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 right now we're about four hundred thousand to seven fifty, um um but uh, but but as as we go through the construction process now in Sarasota, you know, we are looking you know probably like as we go into next year where that kind of startup cost will be closer to like about five hundred thousand to closer to like maybe nine hundred nine fifty, you know, for like our model of franchise, um. You know, but uh, but like like but like our competition, Town Square, they're like two and a half million. They're like a massive freaking model. I mean, they're like they're twelve thousand square feet. Ours is closer to like eight thousand square feet. Um, so it's a, it's a little bit smaller of a footprint. Um, um, but 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 we're you know, but, but a lot of it depends on the area too. So like if we you know, we might go into a market where we only need six thousand square feet, or say that person's in a market where maybe they need ten thousand square feet because the density makes sense. You know, so that's where kind of like some of that variable is. But like for an eight thousand square foot center, we're looking at you know right now between like four fifty and seven fifty. You know, okay. And and that's and that's franchise fee, working capital, uh, furniture and fixtures, construction, and you know it's the that's like the total all in. You know. Okay. And then what could they expect annually, like revenue wise? Is that like something? You yeah. So, so it's hard. Cause like the freaking federal, the federal trade commission, yeah. you know, like they, they like, I can't talk about like those kind of numbers, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, know, it, honestly, at the end of the day, if someone's wanting that kind of information, yeah. Go to what, what'd you say? Could you say the website again? That yeah. So, information and, uh, yeah. And so on the, on the franchise side, it'd be active, age so a c t i v no e active age care.com and then there's a franchise link and then click on that typically what will happen is like we'll we'll go through and have like an initial call and then we'll kind of figure out what state they're in and the, you know because like each state's different so some states are filing states some states are registration states so depending on the state that they're in you know and can we like service that state um then the kind of the next we'll kind of do an introductory call then the next step would kind of be like um you know diving a little bit deeper uh, having them actually fill out an application and then us then at that point in time giving them the FDD so they can review it which has all of like the breakdown of costs in there um, and then and then we'll sit with them like 14 days after that and kind of like go through it together um, answer any questions they might have um, and things like that so man that is awesome dude and I'm so I'm so excited to be part of like seeing you go through this journey and starting all of this and hopefully more and more people will continue to spread the word of this and more awareness to it, because I think it's definitely something that is probably gone under the radar for quite a bit. Too, for too long, man. It's, it's like, like, I think, I think, and I think the next two to five years, it's going to be, there's a, there's a, we have a massive headwind in front of us, but I think like five years from now that pendulum shifts and like, it'll be out of a necessity. Like, fa you know, families will be like trying to find care for their loved one and they're going to go look at their options and everything will be so expensive that they're going to have to like, they're gonna have to be like, okay, well, like, what are my alternatives, you know? And when that pendulum swings in the other direction, I think I really believe that's, that's, that's that moment where adult daycare is gonna have, it, it'll be, I, I truly believe five years from now, it'll start, it'll become one of the fastest growing industries in senior care, you know? Yeah, man, let me ask you some, some quick questions. Some yeah, questions. yeah. So number one thing you've learned in the time that you've been an entrepreneur Number one thing that you would like if I were to meet you in Starbucks or something, and I'm like, dude, Chris, I'm having such a hard time. Like, this is where I'm at. I don't know where to go from here. Yeah. What would you tell me in like a, a two minute or two sentence paragraph? So, 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 of course, this is like, it's like hard to say in hindsight, but if I could have told my younger self mm -hmm. to just pick one thing and just focus on one thing and go all in on one thing, I would have done that. There you go, dude. I think I 150% agree. Like that kind of goes back to like what we said in the very beginning of like not yeah. getting distracted and just picking one thing and going all in. Because, because, because honestly, because we sold our assisted living facility in October of last year. Mm -hmm. So we just closed on that. Um, and, and that was a difficult decision that I had to make, but I, it was after I, real, I realized that I had grown wide in, in my local market you know, so we were like around 3 million a year in revenue. Um, so like I had gone wide, but I, I was then struggling because everything required so much of me that yeah. I couldn't seem to grow up more, you know, like, so like, so too thin. yeah. So like, so I was like, all right, I need to, I need to like cut out everything that's not going to be 
like that's, like if it doesn't help us get to 100 adult daycare locations then i'm not doing it you know yeah no that makes sense favorite so, food favorite food man i don't know we have this place called fresh kitchen in sarasota like freaking i don't know they got these like sweet potato noodles and spice rice and like steak and broccoli all mixed up in this like healthy bowl is freaking awesome i don't know Dang, that's like awesome it's, it's good place you want to visit dream place yeah you want to visit um uh, what's the what's the what's the islands in like south of uh hawaii no. what's that is it it's not maldives is it no because that's yeah, like, japan is it is it is it tahiti i don't know but that's your dream place what's down there? yeah right down there dude because they have the overwater bungalows you know, okay. on the water like that just like i think it's gotta be i think it is the maldives but like there's like it's like uh it's, it's tahiti tahiti right yeah? it's gotta people be tahiti. Are gonna laugh, people are gonna laugh at us and be like these two are idiots. i know right i mean I, I i i don't know why i can't think of it right now i mean but I, I, like that's like been that's like, like i've told my wife well, i told her we we're gonna go on our 10 year anniversary which is this year so i'm like all right well maybe not our 10 year maybe our like 50 years. <laughs> once you guys got your 100 locations right exactly exactly because because like i mean that i mean that's you know you think hawaii is far away like this place is like you know, it's like you got to go to Hawaii and then go all the way to the other side of the world on the, on the southern hemisphere, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. But it's, but, but it's like, yeah, no, it's, I mean, I just, I, I, that and then Santorini. I've always wanted to do that trip. Okay, nice, man. What's your five-year goal? I mean, I know you said 100 locations. That's, that's oh, it. That's it? That's all you're focused uh, on? Well, yeah, yeah, like, like that. And then I have an idea for after that. But, like, I, but it's like I'm not touching that idea until we get to 100 locations, so. How many locations you guys got right now? Just the one? So we own one in Port Charlotte and we're opening our second in Sarasota. And then this year, 2022, our goal is to award five franchisees by like October. There you go, dude. So we, we have like, we have like, like, you know, probably about 16, 17 in, in queue that like I, like I have calls with and we're kind of like working them through their, the system, kind of qualifying them. But our goal is to like identify those five you know, make sure they're strategic, you know, and kind of like, you know, the, you know, that we're, you know, we're not just, we're not just trying to sell a franchise. We're, we're finding five of the right people and then, um, and then launch this year with five next year with 10 and start doing the double, double thing, you know, 10 X and get it right. That's right, man. So like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, well, thank you so much, Chris. Do you have any final words? Shout out all your stuff. What's your channel name? Everything. Yeah. Go ahead so, and yeah, so, you know, YouTube's just uh, Chris Chana with the spelling of K-R-I-S, you know, last name Chana. Um, I did that because I feel like I'm always changing. Like, we, we've changed so much. I'm like, I, got, I, I need to just, like, make it my name because, you know, every time, I, every time I name it something, then, yeah. like, the content changes later, you know. So, um, anyways, but uh, they can go there, ADC Pro, uh, Alpha Delta Charlie Pro com. That's just, like, a nice hub to start that they can, you know, get, kind of get plugged into, like, all the stuff we're doing. Um you know, activeagecare.com, you know, the, you know, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all you on LinkedIn and everything just Chris. Yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, and I, and I feel like YouTube, like for this type of content we're putting out now, it's like all education. So we're just, we're just throwing out tons of education. So if people are looking for education in adult daycare, how to start one, how to, you know, you know, how to finance it, how to budget it, how to whatever, like that, just our YouTube channel is just a wealth of information for that. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, dude, Chris, it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much. Thank, to, thank you, bro. Because I know people are going to want another video. They're going to be like, ask him some more questions. So. Yeah, well, no, good. I love, I love, honestly, those are my favorite. I love making videos from, you know, questions that have come through, man. Those, those are some of my favorite, you know? Yeah. Because then you feel like you're really giving value back to people, you know? Absolutely. And so make sure you guys go subscribe to his channel because that's where he'll have a lot more content. Obviously, if you guys want more, let me know in the comment section, right? So that way we can do another video with all the questions that may be in the comment section. And yeah, if Chris, Chris wants but, to come on, we'll definitely do that. Yeah, I love it, man. You're the man. I love, I love everything you're doing uh, for the uh, residential assisted living community too, man. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing what you've accomplished. And uh, dude, it's, it's all, and, and, and as young as you are, man, like you still got so much you know, ahead of you, man. It's exciting to see where you, you'll take all of that too, so. Well, absolutely. Real last, last question, because I see some books behind you. Yeah. Favorite book. Favorite book, man. That's a hard one. Um, so you got some good ones behind you, so. I know. So, so I don't know why this one right here, uh, Seller Be Sold, and and, and and you know, here's the thing. You know, this is this is that, that Grant Cardone book, you know. Yeah. Um, but like, 
That that one and the 10x one, man. I, I, like I'm, those those are like I think those those just shifted everything everything in my life. So like, okay. you know, like like, it's like 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 especially, and I would say probably that ten, the the 10x rule. I don't know if I have it up there. Um, when I say shifted, it just shifted my mindset. You know, like like I think I read the 10x rule around the same time that like I made my B hack 100. And the difference was, and I'll go back and I remember being in that room with those people that um, at my C12 group. And like when they wrote down their BHAG, like like someone's BHAG, like they did like two million last year in revenue, and their BHAG was like two and a half million next year in revenue. I'm like what? Like oh, okay. you know, like that's a BHAG? Like isn't it? Like that does that? Did not scream big, hairy, audacious goal, right? Shouldn't, like didn't it scare you? In a way? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like so, everyone like came around with like what, in my opinion, were just traditional like yearly annual goals. Like all right, up twenty percent this year. You know? So then I, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm like, well, I put down a hundred locations. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, everyone's like freaking out. But I like that, that, but that, but that, like, I, I think that hundred locations came, you know, that was like when that shift happened after I read 10 X rule and the whole seller be sold, um, you know, just, just cause like, you know, it, like it, it just brought to light some things that I had never really considered before. And I think that in, in the, the whole principle behind the 10X was like, you know, screw 10 locations, let's do 100, you know? There you go, man, I love that. Well, Chris, yeah. thank you so much, man. And yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have to do this again, get you back on the channel. And yeah, hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Guys, go show him some love, go subscribe to his channels. If you guys are interested in that model and everything that he's doing, make sure you guys go check out all those websites and everything. Chris, again, thank you, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, dude, th thank you, bro. Appreciate your time, man. Enjoyed it. Of course. Good, good catching up.